right, welcome to part two, uh, beehive equipment or bee equipment. So um, welcome back for those of you that are following along, for those of you that are joining me the first time, welcome to the channel. Uh, last video we went through some of the equipment that we were going to need as beekeepers. Um, today we're actually going to go through the beekeeping equipment and uh, more specifically the hive. So I use the Langstroff hives. Um, they're kind of the easiest uh, to get parts and pieces and uh, all of that stuff around here in, in Alberta. So uh, today we're going to uh, go through the Langstroff hive, all the parts and pieces, what I use. Um, and then of course uh, we're going to build one of these. So let's not uh, take too long and let's get started. So, so your hive consists of uh, a few main parts. So we've got the base, we've got your bottom board, we've got your brood box. In between here you can see I, I use a queen excluder and then we have the honey super and inside the uh, the top we have a telescopic cover and of course an inner cover. Uh, inside we have our frames. Um, you can buy all of these so uh, uh, if if you don't have woodworking tools or you're not very good at woodworking don't uh, don't worry about it. You can buy all of these um, and you can put them together. You can buy them already together and in fact, the, the supers, um, whether it is the, the deep super or the medium super, I find I buy those. I buy them unassembled. Um, you can see back here, my shipment has come in, which is how we can build this video, but they come unassembled and basically we just have to assemble them together. Um, I can't buy the wood and cut them out uh, and putting any value at all on my time. Uh, I just can't do that for what I can buy them. So I think a, uh, a medium super, I think is, uh, what, 12 bucks? And I think a deep super, I think I buy for 18. Um, so I buy those. Um, you can buy, uh, once again, you can buy them all. I do make my, my stands and my bottom boards, and I'll explain as to why I do that. Um, but this is basically what you would have for a typical setup. For those of you that have been following along my hive updates, as you know, I use um, some hive heaters. Uh, the bug farmer down in Georgia actually came up with a design for a hive heater. Um, so I use hive heaters on my hives, and uh, that basically consists of an extra medium on the bottom for the heating box and an extra medium up top for the control box. We're going to build one of those too. Um, however, I'm not going to build a video on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send everybody down to uh, uh, check out the Bug Farmer's uh, videos. He's got an excellent uh, uh, series of videos of how he built those and how he put them together. And in all honesty, I really don't think I can top that. So um, just know that this, this would be the, the minimum that you would need in order to get started. This is what we're going to build together um, and, and kind of why we will go through it. So we'll start at the top. So a telescopic cover, it's exactly that. It sits on and slips over top of everything and provides a watertight uh, surface. Most of the time you're gonna find them with a the metal on the top. It just, uh, it's good for sun. Um, as you can see, there's a, I, I have a round sidewalk block I put on top of them in order to hold them down so the wind doesn't blow them off. Um, the inside, you'll notice on all of these hive parts, um, the outside is painted. The inside we never paint. So the bees will more than look after all of the inside. Um, you don't have to worry about that. And as far as the, the wood absorbing uh, water and like that, once again, not too, too many problems with it. This telescopic cover is two years old. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty clean. So um, about this time of year, actually, I'll probably make a video on that too. I'll go through and all of my equipment that uh, isn't currently being used, I'll go through and I'll sand it up. If need be, I'll, I'll re, uh, re-stain it, repaint it all up and uh, get it all scraped down and cleaned up for the next season. So, telescopic cover, one of the first ones you're gonna need, it goes right on the top. The next one is your inner cover. So, the inner cover, there's a few different types. So, I don't know if you can see on this one, there's actually a hole cut. So, when that goes on, that can act as a top entrance, or if you don't want it to act as an entrance, you can spin it around and then close it off. Um, so, that's, this is a Boughton inner cover. I didn't make this one. Um, this is one that, uh, that I bought, bought, I guess, with the first set of hives. But So some you'll find like that. Some of the ones that I built. So 
Um, as everybody knows, I use a bucket, so I, my holes on the top aren't, uh, aren't big enough for the, uh, the bottle feeders. But uh, this one here, I've got it uh, set up so that there's a, an upper entrance as well. Um, but I don't use the upper entrance too, too much, and I'll explain why. Um, but anyways, this is one that I did build. So as you can see, you can, you can build them just as easy. Um, we have the store-bought one we mentioned. And then because I use the hive heaters, this is what I typically will use for my top cover. Um, as much airflow as I possibly can get through it, because my control box is going to sit on the top. So I want to, you know, my control box to be able to know exactly what the temperature is inside that hive so I can either heat it in the winter or cool it in the summer. The holes in the center, uh, I use four of them. Of course, uh, I have a cap that goes on top of here. So when I'm not feeding, they, uh, it's a screen cap. So once again, it's more additional airflow. But uh, with the four holes, the bees can get up into my bucket feeder a whole lot easier. And there's uh, more than one way. So they're not all trying to come up and down the same hole. I find it works a little bit better. One of the things that you should note on all of these boards is there's a B space. So there's three eighths of an inch B space all the way around. So that when this goes on, you're gonna have three eighths of an inch B space between the top cover and your hives and stuff on the inside. So um, top covers, or pardon me, inner covers, um, you wanna have one of those. And what, basically what it does is it allows you to keep the water type cover on there and you can take that off without all your bees and stuff being stuck to it or building wax and stuff like that to it. These are much easier to clean. So then you're gonna have your honey super. And of course in your honey super, this is a 10 frame Langstroth hive. So in your honey super, you're gonna have 10 frames in there. So we're gonna go through some of these as well. Um, but we'll do that at the at the end. So you're gonna have a honey super and a brood box. They're the exact same box. It just differs as to what you put in them. So um, this is a deep super. I will show you the difference between a deep super and a medium super. Um, this deep super, when you get 10 frames of honey in it, can get quite heavy. Probably 60 to 80 pounds uh, worth of honey that's that's in here. So some people prefer to go with the medium. Um, instead of the, the deep, just simply because they're a little bit lighter to handle. And of course, if you fill this one up, you can stack another one on top of that and so on and so forth. So, I mean, you could have three or four of these um, all stacked up on top of each other if you've got a really, really strong hive and a really, really good honey flow. So, something to keep in mind, but uh, the, the brood box and the honey super is the exact same box. The frames that you put in them are going to be a little bit different. Next, you're gonna have a queen excluder. So there's a few different types of queen excluders as well. Some people use them, some people don't. Um, I do, and the reason I do is, uh, once again, um, my honey supers are a little bit different. So I use flow hives or flow supers up here. So instead of having um, a regular uh, frame in my supers, um, I will in my brood box, but up here in my honey super, I'll have flow hives. So I'll put a link to a video so you can see what a flow hive is down below. The reason I use a flow hive, the flow hives are more expensive without a doubt. Um, some people still don't like them. They, they're not sure whether they hurt the bees or not. I do have a video on my page. You can go take a look at me um, uh, harvesting the honey out of my super. For a backyard beekeeper with only a couple hives. So I have four hives. Um, I don't have to purchase any of the extraction um, equipment, so I, I don't need any of that. Um, I don't need to um, worry about straining my honey or anything. Basically, I harvest my honey on my flu or my flow super right into my my cans, my jars, my bottles. They get capped and everything right there, and I am done. So, um, but they do come at a premium price. So once again, um, you, we can do it this way. I'm gonna show you this year how to do some of these as well. Um, we could do this with just a cheesecloth. We can still harvest the honey or a, a strainer um, or, or a strain strainer or anything like that. So this will still work. Once again, buy the equipment that fits your budget. Um, 
I just really like the flow hives. I started with a flow hive right from the beginning and personally I'm, I'm sold on them, but I only have four hives. Once again, I probably, if, if I was gonna do eight or 10 or 12 hives, now it would be worth my investment to, to get the extraction equipment, you know, um, to be able to uncap all the combs, spin the combs, strain it, and then ball it from there. But once again, I'm just a backyard beekeeper. I've only got four, so that's kind of why I go with the, the flow hives. But uh, uh, because I use a flow hive, I use the, uh, the queen excluders. And once again, they come in different styles and shapes too. So uh, this is one that just came in with the order that we're gonna use to build this hive. They come in different colors, so you can get them black or you can get them white plastic. Um, they're pretty much the same. They're spaced so that the worker bee can get through it, um, like a gorge worker bee can get through it, but the queen cannot. So um, that they're henceforth queen excluder. Um, you can also get them in metal. I like the metal. The, the slots are a little bit bigger. They don't seem to build up on it quite as much. Um, and of course, there's just a little bit less restriction. The downside, what I found of the metal, is when you put it on there, it's just a little bit slipperier with your with your hives. So you have to, you know, everything still lines up good, but it's it's a little bit slipperier than what the plastic is. Um, and that could be just because my equipment's new. Um, once again, we kind of went through the new and the old equipment. If you can, obviously always start with new equipment. Um, one of the things that I have one of the uh, a private comment on one of my last videos is um, American fowl brood. So you cannot disinfect your equipment from what I understand um, if you end up with the American fowl brood in your hives. In fact, um, a lot of times they, they will make you burn your hive equipment, burn the hives, everything start right from scratch. So they're just, um, once again, more benefits to going with new equipment rather than old handy down used equipment or equipment that you found somewhere if you don't know the history of it. Okay, so then you've got, like say, we've got the queen excluders. Then you've got your brood box. Once again, it's gonna look just the same as the, uh, the honey super. The difference is, is the frames that we put in it. So I mentioned that earlier. Um, I like the black foundation for in my brood boxes. The reason I like the black foundation in my brood boxes is when I'm doing a uh, hive inspection against the black, I can very quickly see the eggs. I can very quickly see the larva. Um, on the other colors, the white to the yellow, um, I find it hard to see the eggs and hard to see the larva. So I really like to go with the black foundation in my brood box. Now, some people will argue no foundation, which is what these strips are. So this is a, uh, a way that I've marked them just so that I know there's no foundation on there. They do have a starter strip in here. So what, is, what the starter strip is, is this one here is just wood that I will coat with a uh, light uh, coat of plastic. In fact, this one's already been coated um, so that the bees will start to build their own comb from here. Of course, the, the benefit of the bees building their own comb, well, it is exactly the way they want it. Um, the downside to it is on certain years, you may end up with way more drone comb than what you would prefer. But uh, at the same token, the bees really know what's best for them and uh, they will build what they need. But we're gonna build a bunch of these for in there as well. So you can either have it so that this will, and actually I should mention, this will work either in the brood box or in the honey super. Um, the downside is, is there's just that much more that the bees are going to have more work the bees are going to have to do before they can fill it with honey. So just to kind of keep that in mind, which is uh, the reason a lot of times people will go with the foundation. So this is plastic foundation of which I've coated with beeswax. So I save my beeswax and I uh, use a roller and I roll beeswax on it. Uh, I find they just take to it a little bit better. Um, other types of foundation. So as I mentioned before, um, the black foundation, and you can see there's, there's different, two different sizes here. So this is the difference between a medium super and a deep super. So as you can see, this fits in there quite well. You wouldn't want to put this in here because what would happen is the bees will build 
um, burr comb where they'll build their own comb down to the bottom. Once again, it would work. You can kind of have half and half, completely up to you, but you're gonna have a frame down there as well. So it's gonna get a little hard. They're gonna seal everything together a little bit better, but try to use the right foundation for the size of, uh, of super that you have. But uh, um, once again, I like the black in my brew box. Um, the yellow or the white, if you were gonna use it, is just fine up in your honey supers. Um, and I'm going to try the white. So this is, these are plastic. This is actually um, bees wax that they have formed into the foundation. And these I'm going to use in my queen uh, mini nukes. So those came in as well. I'll show you all the stuff that came in here on this video is before we get uh, going on the build here. But so you can buy the exact same thing in actual beeswax. And a lot of people make their own foundation. I haven't got into that yet. It's something that I'm intrigued about. Um, I just haven't got to that part in my beekeeping career. So um, no foundation or foundationless, uh, plastic foundation, beeswax foundation. There's different colors. Um, once again, try it out, find what you like, use what works for you. Okay, then we're gonna get down into the, um, the landing board or the bottom, uh, bottom board. I make my own bottom boards. So I'm gonna show you why I make my own bottom boards. So I noticed, um, when the bees would become flying in, um, a lot of times they would be so gorged with nectar that if they had to come and land on the side of the box, they would land on the box and bounce down onto the grass and then have to try again. I actually watched them try to do this a couple times. So I put a landing board out front. Now, some of the, the boxes you can buy, they just have a board that goes straight out. Um, if your hive isn't leveled quite right, the water will run into the hive. And of course, you don't want to do that. So. I build my own with my landing board on the front. I do put it on a little bit of an angle so that any rain that runs down will run out and away from the hive. And I've built it so that your, your entrance reducers will just slide kind of right in there. This is the wrong entrance reducer for this hive. Um, they're, all of these are all out in my hives. And of course, uh, it's minus 26 this morning, so I don't want to go outside and disturb them to get it. So. Um, this is off of one of my uh, smaller hives that I don't use anymore. But you can see how those would just slide in there for the entrance reducers and different sizes. So this is a, a commercial one that you can, you can flip it around depending as to what size of entrance you want. So, you know, you put it in like this, your entrance is going to be fairly big. Put it in like this, your entrance is a whole lot smaller. So um, just a different idea. Um, they're really nothing more than a three quarter by three quarter inch board and you cut the size of slot in it that you want. So that's why I, I build my landing boards the way I do. The other reason I do it is once again, I have hive heaters. So in the summertime, my hive heater in the spring and fall will be below it. So it's a complete screen bottom board um, so that the hive heater can come and heat everything up down from the bottom and flow all the way up through the bottom board, through the boxes, up to the controller, where it, it keeps track of the temperature up top. So um, once again, I build my, my bottom boards like this. And my bottom board is a little bit different from uh, what you'd buy commercially as well, because, um, well, I like it fully screened. I like to be able to clean it easily. And I do still check for, for mites and everything. And on some of the cooler days, um, I don't need the, the, to, to the board in the bottom to block it off. This is really just so during mite control, I can put this in there. I can treat for mites. I can see how many mites fall down on there. I'll spray that with Pam or, or a nonstick grease or uh, cooking grease or something like that. So then I can see exactly how my mite population is. But otherwise, I'll pretty much run it with this removed, I would say 80 to 90% of the time. It's really not required. And then I have my bottom, so my base. So you can see this one here has a styrofoam in it. So my heater would sit on top of this, then my bottom board. So you can see how everything's kind of module, it kind of goes together. Um, I have adjustable feet on the bottom so that uh, I can level it out. Now my hives, being as I have hive heaters, I have electricity ran out to my hives. 
Um, I also use patio bricks so that all of my hives sit on top of a cement brick. Um, I do that so I can easily take the lawnmower in, mow around them, keep it nice. Once again, my hives are right in my yard, so I want them to look good. Um, I want them to be easy to maintain. Um, so this is kind of the reason I do this. The other reason I do this is I will back these out a little bit. And what I found is uh, um, ants love honey. So you can kind of still see a little bit in there. But what I'll do is I'll paint the bottom of this and that uh, bottom adjustment leg with some grease. Um, just same with the same old grease I used to grease up my tractor. So I'll just pump some out of the uh, out of the grease gun and I'll paint it on there. And that seems to keep the ants from wanting to crawl up and enter the hive. So um, these feet, I just got those from Home Depot. They're literally just furniture leveling feet. Um, and that's my hives. So now that I've uh, showed you all the parts and pieces of uh, what I use for my hives, I'm going to build one of these along with you. So I'm going to go through step by step through each, uh, each part and piece of the hive. And uh, I'm going to do a video, upload that video so that you can watch, uh, follow along and see how I do it. Um, our next video, we're, we're going to build probably our, our brood box and our honey super. Um, and of course, we'll, we'll build all the frames and stuff that go in there as well. So if you have any comments, please put the comments down below. I try to get back to those comments uh, every couple days, one or two days for sure. Um, and as always, if you are following along, thank you very much. If you want to follow along, don't uh, forget to hit that subscribe button. Um, if you like the videos, give me a thumbs up. And of course, if you ring the bell, uh, you'll get the notifications when I get the next video uploaded. So until then, um, hope uh, your bees will be coming and we'll get them into these when we get it all built. But uh, keep warm and uh, we'll see you next time.